The A1, Britain's longest road, connecting London, the capital of England, to Scotland's capital city, Edinburgh. At just over 400 miles passing through 17 counties, this road was the first numbered road and is also known as the Great Northern Road. We have bike packed the M25, Britain's busiest road, and we have bike packed Britain's longest motorway. So now it's time to take on Britain's longest road, the A1. Starting my journey in the capital of England, I will be heading north, snaking my way around the A1, trying to find what is left of the trails that follow Britain's longest road. At the start of the A1, St Paul's Cathedral, where my adventure will begin. A sunny Sunday morning, my first point of call to get out of London. Let's follow this road right beside me all the way to Edinburgh. It's Britain's longest road. Getting to the outskirts of London and finding the first off-road trails. The very wet and muddy trails would begin. Although wet and muddy, it was so nice to be heading out towards the countryside, leaving them city noises behind. mostly out of London now, at least the uh, the centre, right on the outskirts now. So uh, we're going to start heading into the countryside a little bit, but uh, for the next, I don't know, a good 40, 50 miles, we're still kind of following the A1, which, you know, follows a lot of built up places. So uh, hopefully we can find some nice little off-road trails around that area. But, um, you know, it's one of them road rides, loud rides, lots of car noise and that means camping is often not the nicest but uh, it's currently about 3 p.m. I've done about 25 miles I'm gonna try and do another 20 miles if I can the good news is all this section of the country flat so happy about that and I'm just currently coming down the uh, cycle route into Hatfield and uh, I'm gonna try and get somewhere towards Peterborough today but it has been raining a lot so the trails are very muddy <laughs> Stevenage. I've done about 40 miles so making good progress. It has mostly been paved cycle path so pretty easy going but but I have just found my very own little bike mascot. Look at him! I think he's meant to be a lion so a uh, comment is named down below and we'll see how long he lasts on my adventures. Uh, I have to find a proper place for him as well. Right, it's uh, gonna, st the sun's gonna set kind of soon, probably in a, uh, maybe two hours. I'm in the built up areas again. So uh, let's go find somewhere to camp. Hopefully we won't have to do too many more miles to find that spot. Let's go.
With my new friend in tow, after a little bit of shadow racing, the sun getting lower in the sky, it was time to try and find somewhere along this busy road to sleep for the night. Well, I have just managed to set up camp for the night. I am literally like just on the outskirts of a place called Biggles Wade, uh, just like a few miles away. Uh, managed to find a little, wood, a little wooded area on the corner of a field, which uh, should be good for the night because tonight, tonight the weather isn't gonna rain. It's very still, there's no wind. The stars are up in the sky. And uh, that means it's gonna be quite a cold one it's currently three or four degrees and it's meant to get down to about zero possibly minus one um, so I might wake up with a nice frozen tent in the morning but hopefully because I'm in a little wooded area it should be a little bit warmer and uh, and also a little drier but I managed to do um, a good 50 just over 50 miles for the first little half day didn't start till uh, about half 12 one so pretty happy with that it's currently half seven and uh, we've got the lion hanging out out there. He's going to protect me tonight. And as always, I'll see you bright and early in the morning. Well, good morning. It is lovely and fresh out here. The sky is bright blue. You've got the sun just rising there. The only downside is you can hear the A1. <laughs> but, my God, what a beautiful, beautiful morning. It looks like it's gonna be. We're heading down there. And, uh, oh, it looks like it could be a really nice day today. It did say it was going to be cloudy today, but as of now, there's not one cloud in the sky. So you're going to get the tent packed up. Me and my buddy are getting back on the trails. And uh, let's, um, let's get a little bit closer to Edinburgh today. Let's see what progress we can make. But it is quite cold, so uh, I want to get on the bike and get pedaling. Let's go! Waking up this morning and getting on the trails with not a cloud in the sky, the sunshine beaming as bright as can be, a perfect way to start my Monday morning. Whilst most people would be jumping in their cars and heading along Britain's longest road, I would be soaking up the winter morning sunshine pedalling through the grassy trails, the perfect way to start any morning. Right, time for some breakfast. I've done about 20 miles. It's currently about uh, 10 a.m. I'm sat on this footpath. I'm actually on this cycle path right along the A1. So it's uh, a nice loud breakfast. We've got uh, some of these apple things. And considering today the sun is shining, the weather is perfect. I thought uh, we'd have a pina colada non-alcoholic of course um, but yeah sun shining it's good 
Now, the only thing is, the A1 is 400 miles. My route, according to Camus, is about 475 miles. My Garmin is currently telling me I've got 280 miles or so to go. My maths is pretty rubbish, but the maths isn't adding up. So I think uh, either Garmin or Camus is wrong and uh, I have no idea actually how far until the finish. I don't really believe the Garmin. I believe it's closer to the Camus distance, 475 miles. So still a good, I don't know, 400 miles to go, possibly. Right, breakfast time and then along the busy roaring A1 road. With pina colada, but no pouring rain, the start of this adventure would be a great one. Even though the longest road was right over my shoulder, I was in my own little world. This is how wide every shared use path, cycle, walking path should be. If it's shared use, it shouldn't be any smaller than this. If it's, too, if it's smaller than this, it's just a footpath. Ah, lovely. Who'd have thought you'd find an actual usable, good cycle path along the A1? And it's a beautiful day as well. Take me to Scotland. done about just under 50 miles about 46 47 miles and uh, it's just uh, super easy really because everywhere's flat on this side of the country a little bit wet but uh, flat and everything is starting to dry out a bit now clouds are starting to roll in so hopefully they're not rain clouds and they're just nice fluffy clouds I'm just coming around the side of uh, Peterborough um, so I'm just making great progress. I'm feeling really good on the bike as well. Legs are feeling good. That pina colada has uh, kept me going strong today. Because my legs are feeling really good today, who knows, I might see if we can uh, knock out a uh, imperial century. A nice little hundred miles. I'm still curious to think, I'm still curious to see um, when my Garmin realizes actually there's an extra 100 miles to go, so it'll be like, oh, sorry about that, an extra 100 for you to go. Currently it's saying, currently it's saying I got 240 miles to go. I don't really believe that. I think it's closer to uh, 340 probably, <laughs> maybe a bit more than that. So uh, we'll see. <laughs> but um, well, let's see if we can possibly knock out 100 miles today. I'm uh, feeling good. With the legs, the mind, and the body feeling great today, I was hopeful that I would be able to achieve my goal of that 100 miles. I would pedal and pedal all day to try and reach this goal. However, sometimes it's not the body that says no. It's not the mind, it's the trails. Today's trails would be slow and muddy. Sometimes you just need that little bit of luck. And today, I would not get 
any such luck. As the sun was setting, the darkness incoming, I would find myself sitting at the side of the road fixing the first flat of this adventure. day three. I'm probably around 15 to 20 miles away from a place called Newark on Trent. Last night or yesterday my uh, my goal of getting that 100 miles was short-lived because the trails said no. There was uh, a fair amount of uh, hiker bike through lights at lots of muddy fields and stuff. Um, it was generally quite fast going still and then I had a little route uh, era where I was following like a restricted byway thinking oh yeah I can be able to go through and it turned into a footpath so I ended up just walking along the footpath which then basically took you along the A1 but in the wrong direction and then while I was walking along there I got a puncture I wasn't even riding when I got this puncture and uh, it turns out somebody whoever that was forgot to uh top up my sealant on my front tire because it was it was basically empty um so now I'm having to ride the rest of this journey on a tube, which uh, never fills me with confidence, um, but it is what it is. We gotta keep moving forward. I'm gonna try and get to Newark on Trent pretty quick. It's I got a little bit of a climb. I say a climb. There's like there's no climbs around here. A little bit of an uphill, and then it's pretty much downhill all the way to Newark on Trent, and that is where we'll get some breakfast. I found a nicer uh, camp spot in a nice wooded area again. It did rain a bit last night. Um, it wasn't too heavy. It was just like a gentle shower, but. Uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's go to Newark on Trent. Still don't know how many miles we've got until we um, at the Let's go. It's not quite sunshine and pina coladas this morning. We're back to the very old grey and miserable looking day. Come on, son. Where are you? This morning the sun was no longer with me and the trail surrounded in thick fog. It was a calm morning as I pedalled along the muddy trails though, them trails still waiting for that sun to shine just long enough to finally dry them out. The mud on these trails this morning, clinging to the bike, clogging it up, making it impossible to ride and just as hard to push. Armed with a mud stick, hiking through the narrow, overgrown byways, just hoping that I wouldn't puncture that inner tube. Wow, that morning was a bit of a kerfuffle and a very muddy one. Um, well, this whole trip's been a very muddy one, but uh, very muddy having to keep uh, unclogging the bike. But uh, I've still not got a puncture, so we're all good. Gonna have some breakfast, just arrived at Newark. Um, I've got some strawberries. I've got some uh, croissants and a couple of bananas. Um, from here, I'm heading up. Doncaster. Doncaster, that's about 50 more miles though, so I'm not sure I'm going to make it all the way there today. I kind of don't really want to make it all the way there today because I don't want to be trying to find somewhere to camp around there because it'd just be too busy and then for the next 30-40 miles through all that area is quite built up. So I'm probably going to try and find somewhere just before that, but that gives us about 50 miles to do today, which will make us 
about around 60 or 70 done today in total. I've done about 20 now. Today is very grey. It's colder when you're riding than when you stop. Apart from that, it's all good. Hopefully the trails won't be too muddy. The path I just came through was ridiculous. <laughs> Fawns, mud, the lot. Right, breakfast and uh, on we pop. The further north I got, the muddier the trails seemed to get. The flat landscape of this part of the country meant all the rain just sat there. Flooded, boggy fields slowing my progress down, but still making friends along the way. Just as I was getting tired of the grey skies and the foggy trails, out of nowhere there would be a break in the clouds, the sky turning blue. An afternoon of colour is just what I needed. I've done about 55, 56 miles so far and it's about half three. I'm probably about 30 miles away from Doncaster. I don't want to get to Doncaster today. Um, and it looks like from the map there is a bunch of uh, tree sections coming up. And there's one in about 10 miles, so I might try, hopefully, see if I can camp there. It is still a bit early, it's only half three, but It'll be about half four or so by the time I get there. And uh, another 65 or so miles ticked off on our way along the longest road to Edinburgh. And, can you believe it? The sun, the sun is shining. It's so nice. Good morning, good morning. Today, I'm about 15 miles away from Doncaster and uh, I've woken up and it's all misty and spooky. But last night was just like really, really peaceful. I'm just far enough away from the road where I can't really hear it, especially where I was, I was sort of like deep down into the woods, so I couldn't really hear it, apart from the odd lorry that went past. But generally, it was just really nice. Today, I have a goal. And today's goal is to get to the halfway point of this route. I think that's in about 70 miles. While between uh, like the Yorkshire Dales on my left, the Moors on my right. So we should be somewhere around there by the end of the day if everything goes to plan and uh, the trails are nice to me. Today I'm starting off in this beautiful woods, but not for very long because I can already see the road and we're gonna head into Doncaster, grab some breakfast. Oh. 
Marty. I love sleeping in the woods and I love to start my mornings in the woods, peddling through yet another foggy morning. It wouldn't be long before I was crossing their muddy fields once again though, heading into South Yorkshire. find myself on the old Roman ridge, part of the ancient Roman road, Ermine Street, a major Roman road that ran from London to Lincoln and York. So after a bit of chariot racing along this ancient road, I would be heading back into the muddy fields once more. With all the fields waterlogged, finding somewhere to pitch my tent was becoming increasingly harder, day by day, and tonight I would end up pedalling off my planned route with the hope of camping in a woodlands I could see in the distance. Well, good morning, good morning. Oh, I'm so tired today. Yesterday was a big slog, big long road slog, but I did end up doing about 85 miles. But then the, the problem was just trying to find somewhere to camp. Around this area, as you can see, it's just all very muddy, wet fields and uh, not a lot of woodlands. This is the woodlands I slept in last night. As you can see, it's right next to the road. It's not very big woodlands either, and it's on a bit of a slant, so it was very awkward sleeping. Although I did uh, oversleep, and it's currently like half eight, so I'm, I'm uh, setting off a bit late today. But I did get to where I sort of wanted to get to, sort of between like the moors and the, the dales, sort of around that part in Yorkshire. So from where I am, I'm going to be going up through Darlington, Durham, and then Newcastle. But Newcastle's a good like 100 miles away, so I'm probably, like, I don't want to be getting to there at, when it's time to camp. And I also don't want to get between Durham and Newcastle because there's just definitely nowhere. So I was looking at the map yesterday and it looks like there's a place maybe like 15, 20 miles away from Durham. But it's like one woodlands and it's like one shot, that's like looks like there's all there is on this whole uh, section of the route where there's like a nice woodlands to camp possibly so I'm placing all my bets on being able to stay there tonight that means I've got to do about 50 55 miles so Silver Line is is generally it's kind of a short day but as you can see there's absolutely no sun and we've got a very gray gloomy day ahead of us once more but, uh, let's head on to uh, day four I think it is we are officially just past the halfway point now. Although my Garmin thinks we're finishing about 80 miles, but we'll see. Maybe we're gonna teleport when we get to uh, 80 miles. Right, let's keep going north.
this has been one road one road slog pretty much it's only a little bit of gravel all the uh, off-road trails just going in the opposite directions they're not going where i need them to so it feels so good to just be on to just be on a little bit of gravel <laughs> even if it is right next to the motorway <laughs> I'm coming into Darlington pretty soon, I think, within the next five miles. I reckon maybe not tomorrow, but the day after tomorrow, we might hit the Scottish border. What a relief that will be. Inner tubes. Right. Now let's go to Darlington. Oh, bloody tubes. That's the problem with riding along these roads and these uh, cycle paths along these roads. They're just full of crap. That one was a fawn though, not glass or anything crap like that. Let's go to Darlington. Just coming through Darlington and uh, I've actually done about 36 miles and to the place where I'm thinking of camping that's in about 20 miles so it could be a very uh, early finish today which is good just grab some food can't remember can't remember exactly what the place is called where I'm gonna camp but it's something about something I'll put it on screen feeling tired feeling very sleepy my legs feel fine just my eyes want to sleep i don't know why i thought i slept pretty good last night so what i'm probably going to do is try and actually have an early night tonight and then tomorrow get up nice and early make sure i don't oversleep this time and uh try and get around newcastle tomorrow not really going directly through it but kind of around it but it's still gonna be busy so but once we get past there it should be a bit quieter a little bit hillier and just generally maybe a little bit nicer to cycle all right 20 more miles to do today and, uh, so far this morning has been mostly road slogs so hopefully we'll get a few little uh, off-road trails now Let's go. Leaving Darlington, heading ever closer to the east coast, the wind was now starting to pick up and that cold, bitter breeze would be on my face for the rest of the day. The wind, though, was the least of my worries, because I would be back to hiking through them wet, muddy, boggy trails once again. A lot of my day today would be a combination of stopping and starting just to unclog my bike. That was one hell of a slog of a day. I'm glad I didn't um, have to do any more miles because then the last 20 were just muddy. Constantly I'm just stopped to unclog the bike. But I think my plan has worked. I'm in the woods where I wanted to camp. Obviously it's not quiet. You can still hear that roar of that road. 
now I've got to uh, find a little spot to uh, set up the tent. I'm thinking here, right behind me, but the ground isn't great, and now I'm using the tarps to have to rely on the uh, on the pegs doing the the heavy lifting. So I'm gonna see if I can squeeze it into here, maybe. Hopefully. We'll see, but yeah, what a day. I did 60 miles in the end, so pretty good going actually. A little bit more than anticipated. A few uh, a few uh, wrong turns or bridleways that led to nowhere, suspiciously. But tomorrow, I am going to get past Durham and Newcastle, so that's good. And then after that, it should, we should have uh, left a lot more of the monotonous riding behind us, most of it, until Edinburgh. It should be a bit quieter, should be able to find some uh, nicer off-road trails. It's going to start getting a bit hillier as we head into Northumberland though. Right, as always, I'll see you bright and early in the morning. <sighs> What a lovely, lovely night. Time to go to Newcastle. Oh, good morning, good morning. I'm so sleepy again. I slept so good, why am I so tired? My eyes feel all puffy. Oh, this eye really hurts on my right hand side. Oh, all right, today we are going to be making it to Newcastle, I'm about I don't know, five miles away from Durham or so and then up towards Newcastle and around and then on to what should be the more fun part. My Garmin currently showing the correct distance or roughly the correct distance I guess about 170 miles until Edinburgh that will change back to about 30 or 40 in a minute I'm sure um, so yeah 170 miles that means maybe two and a bit more days until we arrive in Edinburgh but we'll see because them trails have been very muddy so that's uh so the goal today is to just get past Newcastle really try and get another 60 miles out and uh, hopefully not get too muddy let's go What was I saying? <laughs> Another day on the wet trails, but every mile ticking down was getting me further along Britain's longest road and just like the previous couple of days, today would start out wet and grey, making my way through the busy Durham and onwards towards Newcastle, but not before being greeted by what is believed to be the biggest sculpture of an angel in the world, the Angel of the North. So nice to uh, get out the top end of Newcastle away from all the noise and traffic onto a nice cycle path right away. We're now sort of heading right north again. <laughs> we were heading all the way around Newcastle, now we're heading north. And according to my Garmin, we've got about a mile to go. Who knew? Edinburgh was so close to Newcastle. We're gonna find out what happens. Maybe we're gonna teleport. Beat me up, Scotty. <sighs> it 
inner tube, man. Please, no more punctures. There is a bitterly cold wind coming from over there, which is where the sea is. Whew. But it's nice to be on some country roads. I just really hope I don't get another flat. I fixed the other inner tube, put a new one in, and uh, hopefully it will be good. Cold though, it's about three o'clock, so I'm gonna do a couple more hours and hopefully find somewhere good to camp. But Scotland, we are coming for you. That wind from the east getting colder and colder, with each pedal getting me closer to that coastline, with the next few hours of riding starting to become more exposed and, of course, muddy. As I made my way along the farm tracks, I was on the lookout for somewhere to pitch the tent. But just like the previous days, finding somewhere dry and hidden away from the passing traffic was proving harder than I would have liked. So it would be another night pedalling into the sunset, but not before stopping to take a look at the impressive Annick Castle. Good morning guys, good morning. Yesterday, stay, stay. Yesterday I made pretty good progress. I did 75 miles in total yesterday, which means, which has left us with just 100 miles, pretty much exactly to do until we get to Edinburgh, which means today we get to Scotland in about 35-ish miles, I think is the Scottish border. Um, about 30 miles is Berwick, and then just a little bit after that is the uh, Scottish border. Uh, last night, I had to ride into the evening a little bit, into the darkness a little bit, um, to find somewhere to camp. The hardest thing about this ride is not the distance. It's not even the muddy trails. It's not, definitely not the hills because there's just none. It is just generally finding somewhere good to camp because you just generally can't find anywhere. It's, uh, it's such a pain because there's no woodlands that are accessible. Um, so the one I'm in right now, I had to uh, sneakily hop a fence, run across a field and get in. Um, but it's pretty good. But the only downside to this woods the A1 is literally like across a little field that way. The second worst thing about a trip like this is just the constant drone of noise. Although it, there wasn't too much uh, traffic for a few hours in the night, so that was good. But we've got to sneak back across this field and uh, onto Berwick we go and onto the Scottish border. Let's get packed up. It's looking like it's a windy day out there. Let's do this. Let's go to Scotland. It's all packed up and ready to go. Oh yeah, I found next to my lion, I found some of these uh, cherry things for the uh, the car. They still smell good as well. So we've got another little decoration for the bike. All right, let's go for another day of pedaling the A1. First of all, let's uh, sneak across this field. Scotland. <sighs> the 
The day I had been most looking forward to on this adventure, the day I would make it to the Scottish border. All I had to do to get there was a small 35 miles. And today the trails, to my surprise, were dry, hard packed and rolling well. From the quiet gravel byways to rolling through the forest tracks and finally along the exposed coastal paths with that bitterly cold wind still in my face, getting ever closer to that border. But I would arrive into Berwick with yet another puncture, and the only bike shop had closed down. Inner tubes. Oh, what a nightmare today has been. I'm currently just coming out of Berwick. I've done about 35 miles today. The one puncher I did get, I fixed, I patched it up, got to Berwick, it went down again. So I've tried patching it again and it seems to be holding, but, but I'm out of glue now. I'm out of inner tubes. So, so it might be a bit of a limp to the finish line. I don't know how far we got, probably about 60 miles. The next stop is the, uh, is the Scottish border. Please make it Sonder, please. Finally making it to that border wasn't as joyous as I had planned as I knew I had to keep moving forward with my front tire now losing pressure. I wasn't sure how long this patch would hold. All I knew is it had only slowed this puncture down. It's very much right now. Pedal, pedal, pedal get as far as I can before the tyre gets to that point where it's uh, just uncomfortable to ride. Pump it up a bit more <laughs> and then uh, carry on. It seems to be very slow though, so I get a good maybe 30 minutes to an hour before it gets to the point where it's uh, a bit unrideable, but oh well, we're gonna make it. Keep pedaling and keep pumping. This goes to show how flat this side of the country really is because you could say I'm going up the climb of the day or the climb of the ride because when I get to the top of this little climb it's the highest point and it's not even a thousand feet it's going to be like 750 maybe 800 it's uh just goes to show really this side of the country flat flat as a pancake <laughs> and uh, it's very grey, it's very miserable. There's a, few, there's a few specks of rain in the air. I'm just hoping I can get all the way to Edinburgh without rain. Imagine that, seven days on the trail, no rain. I'm not planning to get there today, just planning to get as close as possible really to get there tomorrow, nice and early. Let's keep spinning up this draggy road. Sometimes you don't know what you need to do, but on this occasion, it was simple. I only had one choice. With the tire slowly losing pressure and no way to fix it, I would pedal and I would pedal hard to get as close to Edinburgh as I possibly could tonight. The finish of the longest road was in sight. I would pedal into the dark to get just eight miles away from Scotland's capital, covering 95 miles that day finding a little woodlands to pitch my tent for one last night before me and my bike would crawl to the end of Britain's longest road. <laughs> 